Hey again, so I'm doing something a little different. I'm kind of doing a look at the past Saturday's DC fandom event. Now, uh, I am a couple days late, obviously, but uh, I wanted to kind of go over, like, stew over a couple of things that happened on the Saturday event. I didn't actually watch the entire four hour. It was more like three and a half hour experience. What I did was I kind of started it. And then when I got to a segment I didn't want to watch, I did something else, and then I came back half an hour, we round to that segment, fast forward, kind of skimmed through the whole thing, and then like watched the things I wanted to see as they were happening. So I didn't see exactly everything, but I did see most of the highlights. And, you know, there were things that I really liked, but there were things that ultimately were kind of bitter. To me, which is why I did the title, why DC Fandom was bittersweet for me, because there were some sweet moments, there were some really bitter moments, and there were some so so moments. So I guess I'm gonna go over that real quick and kind of give my thoughts on Saturday's, you know, events for the year 2021, uh, because I'm sure there's going to be another DC Fandom event, and this video is going to feel completely out of place if someone starts watching this video for a 2022 event. I'm rambling, I should get to it. <laughs> okay, so I want to start off, first things first, the announcers they got for this event, they need to tone it down like a hundred percent, okay? So clearly these were paid actors that they paid to do these like introductions to the next segment and whatnot, and like, so many other events like this, whether it's a, a video game event or something like that, Comic-Con, E3, th they overdid it, okay? And so just example, this was not announced during the DC Phantom event, I'm just using an example. Imagine they're coming out with a new three-issue limited-run miniseries comic book about what if Batman was a dog. I don't mean a dog like Rowdy Party Animal Dog. I mean an actual canine dog, all right? And let's say they announced it during this. Well, one of the many announcers after they played it would go, oh, wow, guys, did you see that? That was amazing. I mean, I just, when it comes out, I want to lock myself in my room for weeks on end and just read that over and over and over and over again. I don't want to eat. I don't want to watch anything coming to the theaters. I just want to read that three issue comic book over and over and over and over again. It's going to be the greatest thing since sex itself. Yeah, uh, they need to chill the fuck out. Okay, that's all I have to say. These people are way too excited about this stuff. Alright? I mean, it's just like, guys, you don't have to try that hard. Alright? But, moving on. Uh, probably the worst aspect, I'll get this out of the way, is apparently during this event, I didn't see this part, but it was one of the more well reported on it aspects of this event is the fact that Superman has a new motto they removed for truth, justice, and the American way to truth, justice, and a better tomorrow. And quite frankly, that new motto sucks ass. All right. I'm sorry. I'm an American. I like being an American. I think Superman got his start off being a icon of Americana. And, like, I'm sorry if you hate your country you're living in. I personally kind of like it, despite the fact that it has a troubled and flawed past. Alright? Superman is iconic with America. Alright? That's how I gotta start this new motto. It, it's not going to sell more comic books. If anything, they're going to lose more sales. And people are wondering why uh, MAGA Comics, probably not pronouncing that right, are doing so much better than, you know, American comics. This is one of the reasons why. So I think that sucks, it's stupid, and, and moving on. Then, I gotta ask, why did they do like a 20 minute segment on the TV show Smallville? Like, I, I don't get that, why? I mean, didn't that show end like 15 years ago? I mean, I, I guess it's the anniversary, but I mean, they spent a lot of time on it. 
And then, of course, they did a segment where, like, they were saying goodbye to the cast of Supergirl since that show's ending. And then they did, uh, focus on, um, you know, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, which, when I saw that, it was like, didn't that show get canceled, like, a couple years back? It it's still playing? Who am I talking to? Yeah, and so it's like, I had, I thought that show ended. And then they did another focus point on uh, Batwoman, which, quite frankly, I'm amazed that show's still going on because, like, its best viewed episode was, like, the first one, and it got, like, 1.5 million views in, like, terms of Nielsen ratings. And that's about it. Don't quote me on any of these numbers. I'm kind of using, like, best logic here. You can probably put the correct numbers down below in the comics. But, I mean, yeah, no, it... it it's not doing well. Like I've I've heard some of the episodes have only had like two to three hundred viewers watching it. Uh, two or three hundred thousand viewers watching it, and that's about it. I mean, typically when a TV show has those kinds of numbers, they'll cancel it. But you know, Batwoman's the show that's still chugging on. So it's like, hey, I guess bravo, um, good job. So I mean, like, but I didn't really care about that. And like, what little I did see acting kind of seemed shitty and uh then there was a segment on doom patrol and titans which honestly i haven't been following those shows i don't really care although i have heard that brendan fraser does a great job in doom patrol i just haven't really found time to watch that show and then they got into the good stuff which was um kind of these behind the scene looks at upcoming movies so they're not quite teaser trailers but you gotta see like what some of the props look like what some of the costumes look like what some of the sets were going to look like and we got kind of behind scene looks for Aquaman, Shazam, Black Am and The Flash but more so with Aquaman and Shazam because we didn't really get trailers for those two films we just kind of got a look behind the scenes Admittedly, I'm not super excited about Aquaman, but the only reason why I am looking forward to it is because James Wan is back as director, and like he's the reason why that first film worked. Because there was a lot of things in that first film that honestly was not executed well, but because of his direction and the camera work he employed in that film, it was quite impressive, and so I'm glad he is back. And I, I'm going to check out that movie just because of the director. Uh, I'm not nuts about the new Aquaman costume. I'm not really interested in like the general story stuff that they explain. Although I do like that most of the cast is back. And so that's pretty cool. And then we got a look at Shazam, which is oddly, while they're done filming it, it's not coming out till 2023. Like this feels like a movie that should have came out next year in 2022 but there's already a lot of stuff coming out next year so i kind of get it and you know like shazam none of this really intrigued me but at the same time the first movie did not intrigue me the trailers didn't intrigue me and then i watched it and i had a blast with it and so i kind of feeling like the same thing's happening again like yeah i mean it's cool that helen mirren and lucy Liu are playing the main villains I'm not excited about it yet, but I'm sure once I watch this film, I'm going to absolutely love it, like the first film, because the same thing. Trailers didn't sell me for the first film, I just kind of watched it because like, okay, what is DC offering, and I laughed my ass off doing that first film. So, I am going to check out the second Shazam, but these two films kind of weren't super exciting to me. And then there was a segment about Black Adam, which I guess is Shazam's like arch nemesis, but like... I, I'm not familiar with that area of comic books. Black Adam, Shazam, I, I'm not that familiar with it. I do know that Shazam in the comic books looks nothing like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but, you know, you can't really get upset because it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's gotten to a point in his career where if he's in a movie, you're going to be entertained. It may not be the best movie out there. It may not even be an amazing film, but you're at least going to have a fun time with one of his movies. I mean, that's the case with, like, Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise is objectively not a great movie. I wouldn't even say it's a good movie, but I had a fun time with it regardless because it's a high adventure kind of Indiana Jones vibe movie with Dwayne and Rock Johnson in one of the lean roles. So, I mean, you're going to have fun with a Dwayne the Rock Johnson movie, and the fact that he's going to be in a superhero movie is kind of cool, especially since, like, 
Dr. Fate is a character I've never really been huge into, but for some reason, I just absolutely love the casting of Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate. I, I can't explain that. But, so, like... This seems like it's going to be a cool movie, and we did kind of get, like, a teaser trailer as such. It's not really a teaser trailer. It was just, like, a scene that you got from the movie. And I ultimately enjoyed this. I thought it was a pretty cool, like, tease. It's not a trailer, but fans at least got to see something, all right? And I think more movies should kind of do this. Like, hey, we're working on this film. And we want to show you guys an uh, early look at this film. It, it's just a quick little scene. And you get that quick little scene, and it's like, okay, cool. We got to see some aspect of the film. I like it when movies do this. And then the next one we got was The Flash. Now, I'm not a huge Flash fan. I'll be fully honest with that. Uh, I did not really care for any of his live-action interpretations. And then I saw Zack Snyder's Justice League, it's like, hey, they actually made The Flash kind of cool in this film. Apart from that weird intro. But the ending, if you've seen the ending to Zack Snyder's Justice League, The Flash is pretty cool. Honestly, after seeing this teaser trailer, they said it wasn't a teaser trailer, but it's pretty much a teaser trailer. I am kind of excited for this film, because you're literally hearing Michael Keaton talking in the trailer, it's like Michael Keaton is back as Batman, and that is so exciting. Like, I just could not stop grinning as I was watching that trailer for the first time. It was just like, oh, that, that's, that, that's Michael Keaton. <laughs> you know? And of course, you know, Flash taking that sheet off of the old classic 1989 Batmobile. I mean, we didn't see it, but we all know what was underneath that sheet. <laughs> And I even like the shot of the Flash, the, um, the other world, like, uh, Supergirl that's not identical with comics, and then another version of himself standing there, like, building up kind of this huge, like, crossover effect. I've heard rumors that Ben Affleck is going to be in this one as well as another version of Batman. And so, like, honestly, I'm kind of looking forward to this film after seeing this trailer. So good job, Flash. Good job. And then before I get to the main event, uh, there were two video game trailers, or there was more than two, but there were two kind of main focus video game trailers, one for Gotham Knights, the other were for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And I kind of feel like um, these were better than the ones shown last year, because, you know, honestly, I was not impressed by the uh, Suicide Squad trailer they showed last year. I was not happy with the roster. It's like, okay, maybe I might enjoy playing as Harley Quinn, but that's really about it. Thankfully, these trailers were done a little bit better because, like, Suicide Squad, is this was a story trailer for both of them. And, like, Suicide Squad feels a little bit like Guardians of the Galaxy does in terms of, like, the tone. And also, this is after the fact that James Gunn's Suicide Squad was released, and after that movie, I, like, was thinking... Oh, wait, there was a video game coming out with King Shark in it. I want to play that just for King Shark because I loved King Shark in the Suicide Squad film. Like, that was one of my favorite characters in that film. And so, after that coming out, I'm more excited about the game than I was last year. And, you know, like, 2 out of 4 ain't bad in terms of characters I'm looking forward to playing. Honestly, if it was up to me, I would rather Deadshot be Bloodsport or Deathstroke. And I would rather, you know, Boomerang be, um, I don't know, maybe Katana. That'd be a pretty cool character to play as. I mean, if you had that lineup, like Deathstroke, Katana, Harley Quinn, and King Shark, that'd be a pretty awesome game. And then Batman, or Gotham Knights, you know, did the Core of Owls focus story trailer, which, honestly, I was kind of hoping we would have gotten a Batman game focusing on Court of Owls, but... You know, again, Gotham Knights, I'm not really excited about Nightwing, Robin, or Batgirl, but I am kind of looking forward to playing as Red Hood, and one of the reasons why I'm looking forward to playing this game is because it's being made by you, Warner Brothers Montreal, which is the company that made Batman Arkham Origins, and that is like one of my favorite Arkham games out there. It's one of my favorite Batman stories ever made. And so I've always been like really eager to see what they were going to do next. And now they're doing Gotham Knights next. And so, you know, these trailers were pretty good. 
you know, I enjoyed them. And then on to the main event, which was the Batman trailer. Now, this trailer, I've kind of been eager, uh, very optimistic about this movie. Uh, I don't hate the director. I don't hate the choice in Batman. I, a lot of people did not like Robert Patterson as Batman, but I've ever since seeing him in movies like The Rover, I've been like really shocked at like the range he's extended his acting. Yes, he did Twilight, and yes, a couple of the movies after Twilight, he didn't really escape that type of character. But in recent years, he's been doing some very diverse roles, especially like with the Rover. He did an amazing job in the Rover. It's just like, that's the guy from Twilight, you know? And so uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing how he does Batman. The first teaser trailer was released last year, and I overall enjoyed the look of that trailer. I was more surprised by the Riddler and the Penguin. And we finally got to see like the full main story trailer. And the thing I absolutely love about this trailer is when it was over, I didn't feel like I just got done watching the entire movie, which is so rare now these days. I can't tell you how many movies spoil the shit out of everything. All right, you just have to look at the second Kingsman movie to know what I'm talking about, where they reveal the biggest surprise in that movie in the trailer. So apparently most of the time, the directors have absolutely no control over how the trailers are made. And so it felt like this trailer did not spoil every single aspect of the movie. I still didn't fully know what the overall story was. And we did not, we have not yet once seen how the Riddler looks. We've only seen like a back shot. We've only seen like his chest without seeing his face. And so it's not so much, I think they're gonna have it where like his face is all messed up, but I think it's just they want to kind of keep that aspect of the character unknown until people see the film. You know, like they, they want people not to know exactly every single aspect of the film. And I love that. I also really like the more ferocious Batman. Clearly, they're going with a more year one approach, although I'm curious if they're going to have Catwoman as stripper like she was in year one, but regardless of that, they're going for more of a year one approach, and this isn't so much an origin story, but it's like, hey, Batman's been around for like a year, and people still don't know if he's real, they don't know if he's actually going to do much good, you're just hearing these rumors. All right, uh, there's already a bat light that we see in this trailer. And so, like, we're kind of, I've gained some really strong Ar Arkham Origin vibes with this movie because it's kind of like, yeah, Batman's already established, but he hasn't really hit it big yet. And, like, also with the Penguin. The Penguin does not feel like, you know, Danny DeFeo's Penguin. The Penguin in this movie feels like Arkham Origins Penguin, where he's still just going by his full name, Oswald Cofflepot. He's not really embraced the whole penguin motif, where he's using like the wind-up penguin toys that blow up. It's just he's a he's a gangster right now, and I really like that. Speaking of the penguin, I feel like Colin Farrell is going to steal this film when it comes out because I mean, like, damn, I I'm still I I've watched the trailer numerous times. I'm just looking at it. it's just like that doesn't look like Colin Farrell. But I know it's him, and he's just doing an amazing job. What little we have seen in these two trailers. Uh, I like the more violent, ferocious Batman that we've seen in this trailer. I mean, like, it really seems like he has a chip on his shoulder, he, he's pissed off about the way his life's went, and he's just taking it out on bad guys. He doesn't feel like he's, like fused his ideology yet it's like he's still trying to figure shit out he's still trying to figure out who he is how he wants to deal with crime and it's just like it feels like right now he's just going out and beating the shit out of people going out beating the shit out of people it doesn't seem like he's actually trying to make a serious difference by addressing corruption and the political system and whatnot and like you can kind of see this with the suit and the batmobile i've heard a lot of criticisms about the batmobile I actually really like it 
because one of the reasons why I like the Batmobile is it feels like it was something he just kind of threw together. It doesn't feel like this is the best Batmobile he's going to have in his career. It feels like this was the very first one. This is the prototype. It feels like he just grabbed a Dodge Charger, slapped a rocket engine on the back. It's like, okay, this should work for me for right now. You know, it feels like he didn't put a lot of effort into the Batmobile because he just needed a quick form of transportation. So I like that. I also like the suit. The suit doesn't feel like it would cost a hundred grand to make. It feels like, you know, 10 grand, throw something together pretty easy. Just make sure it's ball proof and voila, you got yourself your first Batman suit. It doesn't feel like one of those super technologically advanced Batman suits that we see in the comic books or in the video games where, you know, like Batman Arkham Knight, that suit feels like you need to spend a hundred million dollars on that suit for it to work. This suit feels like you could spend two, three, four grand on it and it would work. So I, I like I like the simple basic vibe of this Batman, this series, this universe, this kind of characterization of the character. Because like, you know, with Ben Affleck, we got the very aged veteran. He has all the toys and cool gimmicks and whatnot. And so I like the polar opposite. I feel sad that this isn't a prequel to Ben Affleck's Batman. Like they could have easily had this a prequel. Like, hey, this is how Ben Affleck's Batman started. All right, and so you kind of got these two bookends and they slowly like work their way to like a middle point, probably with the Jason Todd thing. But, you know, they kind of made sure it couldn't be connected since they uh, changed the race of a couple of characters. Now, surprisingly, while I do not like it when people change the race and sex of characters from books and comic books and whatnot, I'm actually perfectly fine with the choices of actors in this film because one, Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman. Catwoman's been black before, okay? Eartha Kitt, Halle Berry. I know a lot of people hate the Halle Berry movie, but it counts. And then so, like, also Zoe Kravitz, I believe she voiced Catwoman in like the Lego Batman movie. So it kind of feels like a no brainer. And so, like, what I saw from her in the trailer was like, okay, you're doing the short hair, Selena Kyle. It, it won't. You know, I, I think it works. And then with Carissa Gordon, like, I really did not want to like that choice. But at the same time, it's Jeffrey Wright. Like, in the list of, like, some of my favorite acting actors, you know, like, professional actors in Hollywood, he's in my top four. I mean, like, the guy can convincingly play a bum. And then he can play a criminal kingpin, and he can play a scientist, a doctor. I mean, like, this guy is one of the most versatile actors I have seen in Hollywood since the 90s. And the guy is amazing at, like, almost everything he does. Even when it's a movie I don't like, like, Hold the Dark, he did a good job in that film. And so I think he'll do an amazing job as Commissioner Gorin. I'm probably fine with the uh, casting decision in this film. And last, I was surprised by the release date. Like, the release date, I had heard rumors that it was going to be October next year. It's like, so, literally, you're going to make us wait another year. And when I saw at the very end that it's March of 2022, I was completely shocked by that. It's like, oh, wow, that's, that, that, that's surprisingly close. And so... Overall, I love this trailer. It was really awesome. I, I liked the visceral tone of it. I liked that Batman just anytime Edward Furlong was in the suit, he looked perpetually angered and pissed off. Like, you know, like just screaming his, his soul out. And when he was Bruce Wayne, he just seemed like more reserved, more calm, more like behaving himself. And I, ultimately, I did like this trailer, and I'm probably going to see this movie at the theaters. Um, so yeah, that was the DC Phantom event. Overall, uh, there were some cool things about it, some things I didn't like, whatnot. They got to change their format of ha paying actors to be overly excited about <laughs> every little <laughs> thing they did in the show. Like, just... I mean, there are diehard Batman fans did not react the way to this trailer like these people did to, like, one-shot comic book issues and tiny things in this show that, like, did not warrant that kind of reaction. 
So, anyway, my name is Chris Connor. This has been 11th Hour Reviews, and that was my opinions and thoughts on the DC Phantom event. And so, yeah, discuss down below.